So after we find the determinant of a matrix, the second thing we're gonna do in order to find the inverse is to find the adjoint matrix. And we saw that for a two by two, we just swap A and D and then C and B change place. For anything bigger than a two by two, um, the adjoint matrix is just calculated as the transpose of the matrix of cofactors. So if A looks like this, All you're gonna do is find all of your cofactors. So find the cofactors corresponding to this number. So C11, then C12, then C13, then C14, C15, C16, etc. all the way through. So here I would have nine cofactors. Um, you're gonna put those all into a matrix and then transpose it. That's it. So let's go ahead and look at this one. So if I remove row one, column one, C11 is going to be the determinant of 5, 8, 6, 9. And if I look at my grid, for this problem, my grid starts with a plus, so it's going to be positive. If I wanted to do C12, I would take this, remove row 1, remove uh, column 2, and then I'd find the determinant of 4, 7, 6, 9. And the, the grid here has a minus sign, so I would change the sign. And then, same thing. C13, I would remove row one, remove column three. The determinant's gonna be four, seven, five, eight. And then the grid here has a plus. So this C11, C12, C13 become the first column in my cofactor matrix or in my uh, adjoint matrix. And then I would repeat for row two, repeat for row three, find all of my cofactors. So all the cofactors for my first column Go into, or for my first row, go into my first column. Co factors for my second row, go into my second column. Third row, third column. Once I find all those cofactors, then there you go. That's your adjoint matrix. And then you're done. So, in order to calculate the inverse of a matrix, we're gonna go all the way back up to the top. We're gonna find one over the determinant of A. For any matrix, you can use cofactor expansion. Pick the row. Here we go, pick the row with the most zeros, find the cofactors for every element in that row, multiply each cofactor by its corresponding element and add it together. Then you find the adjoint matrix. For the adjoint matrix, you find all of your cofactors for all of your elements. So cofactor one, one, that's gonna go in the one, one location of your, of your adjoint matrix. Cofactor one, two is gonna go in the two, one location because you transpose it. So all the cofactors for row one become the first column in your adjoint, then row two becomes column two, row three becomes column three, and that's it. Then you do one over the determinant times your adjoint matrix and you have found your inverse. So personally, personally, I find this method this method here, um, significantly easier in terms of finding the inverse versus doing row operations. Um, but if you do either one, it should get you to the same answer.